the beauty of branding related or versus marketing I see is that branding kind of puts you in the driver's seat of having the luxury of choosing who you want to do business with. Hello and welcome to episode 181 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Kat Torrey, brand architect and voice expert, to share her insights on a topic that's becoming increasingly pivotal in the real estate industry, personal branding. Stressing the importance of authenticity, Kat urges agents to create a brand that not only aligns with their values, but resonates with their specific audience. Her advice is valuable for both new agents in the midst of developing a tailored brand for a unique audience and veteran agents looking to re-energize their careers. Lastly, Kat emphasizes the importance of a consistent online presence. From social media to partnerships and media collaborations, she shares how agents can build credibility and expand their reach in today's competitive market. But before we get on to today's featured interview, the all new Smart Agents Magazine has launched and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Kat Tory. If you enjoyed our conversation and want to learn more, be sure to check out her website, kattory.com, and download her free materials to help you build your own personal brand. Also, be sure to give her podcast, Not Nice, Clever, a listen. I've included links to everything in the episode description. Really, the way I'd like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, who you are, and a little bit about your uh, background. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Kat Tori. I am the brand architect and voice expert. I enjoy working with real estate driven entrepreneurs to just cultivate a more authentic brand so that they can feel more like themselves and their business, garner more business, build more relationships, live a better life. Because at the end of the day, I do know that people are seeking more business and more money, but they also want to have a better lifestyle. So that is really what I love to do. And I didn't always work in branding. I kind of niched down over the last couple of years. I actually cut my teeth in the marketing space as a copywriter once upon a time when I was in nursing school about eight, nine years ago and had a few plot twists between then and now and fell in love in working with, with startups and working with individuals more recently and really just helping them better understand themselves and better understand how they want to do business and who they want to do business with because the beauty of branding related or versus marketing I see is that branding kind of puts you in the driver's seat of having the luxury of choosing who you want to do business with instead of having to go the more traditional tactics of cold calling, cold outreach, which I'm not saying that you can't also do that and find success. It's just not the way that I would like to do business and I found the most joy. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, as you look at the way uh, businesses have evolved over the last several years, really that more one-to-one in that personal relationship that you connect with, Mm -hmm. regardless of what the business is, is really starting, you know, is really kind of climbing as the top way to do business. It is. People want to do business with people. And when I'm working with clients or I'm hosting workshops or I'm at conferences speaking, I remind them that, especially if I'm talking to real estate agents and brokers, you guys weren't born in a blazer. You weren't born to sell houses. Um, You might've been born to become an agent and to become a broker. And I love that that's your calling, but you were a human being first for several decades. And I really love putting the human back in business, the human back in branding. Um, Because at the end of the day, it also leverages the fact that we're biologically wired to want to connect with people. We see human beings' faces. You're smiling right now. I'm wanting to smile. And so that can really be supportive in business. And I love that we've shifted that way. Definitely, I think since COVID too, that really exposed our desire for 
just human connection, human touch, being able to be seen and appreciated and spend time with other people. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, in the real estate space, it, it is so interesting because when I think back to the agents that I've worked with in the past, I have no idea what brokerage they worked with. I know their names, you know, that, that's really right. I have no idea who, who they hung their license with. Yes. It's so funny. I was actually telling a client this the other day because he's in the midst of switching brokerages and there was such anxiety and apprehension in this switch. And he was thinking of all the things that he had to do like tomorrow. And I was like, you know, I was like, let me share a story with you. When I was buying a house in early 2021, the agent we went with was somebody that worked with my husband. And so my husband's a chef. And so he works in hospitality and the agent was actually a server at his restaurant. And I had come and I'd spent a lot of time at the restaurant naturally. And I saw how he worked and took care of people in the restaurant setting. And I knew that's how he would take care of with us because you don't radically become a different person, you know, from one job to the next. And so we chose him because we knew him, we respected his work ethic, his ability to provide hospitality. And I, I feel like anybody in the real estate space, they're also in hospitality. It just so happens to be that the product is a house and not a dish of food. So, and I think, I think he was with Century 21. I honestly don't even remember. Of course, this is like years later. But yeah, I'm so glad that you called that out. Yeah, well, and so, you know, for agents that, uh, you know, are just breaking into the industry and, you know, don't have, you know, big business behind them yet or things like that, and they are working with a brokerage and obviously they're, you know, they're going to get the logos and the marketing materials with all that. Yes. But how important is it to right from the get go to really start building that personal brand so that your clients and your sphere connects with you rather than, you know, the logo on your card? So important. I, I tell all the clients that I work with, even people that, that I just, you know, meet through, through networking and, and traveling that, Statistics show you will eventually leave your brokerage for whatever reason, um, and you'll do it multiple times throughout your career, very likely. And imagine if you're only supporting and building your brokerage's brand and not your own, and you can use the term reputation or impression in in place of brand synonymously. Like that's really what it is, is building a reputation with relationships. And so I always want to recommend that we build something so that you are not beholden to any one organization or brokerage. You have independence to be able to take those relationships with you. You're not stuck in a CRM. You're not stuck at a brokerage that, don't, that doesn't align with your values. And it's kind of, it gives you a nice sense of ownership in your business too, because you can't really blame anything on the brokerage. You get to be able to build whatever type of business you want. And so I think for those agents just starting out, take all of the resources that your brokerage is offering. You're paying a split. Mm. Use them for all that they are worth, absolutely. But also start to take steps to develop clarity and awareness and strategy on building your own brand, your own reputation digitally and offline as well to create that kind of omnipresent engrossing feeling. And it's, it's a long-term play, I will say. But if you never start, it's always just going to be someday and not day one. Right. And I think that's a really important point about, you know, building a personal brand is it's not something that you're going to be able to track an immediate sale to, you know, tomorrow or in a month. Mm -hmm. It's a cumulative event or cumulative, you know, effect of everything that you're doing. Yeah. It gives you an overall lift. And I think another thing that I've seen with real estate agents and brokers is that when we say, or they hear or read, build your personal brand, they immediately just think social media. And I understand why that they would, why they would understand, why would they would believe that. But social media is just one aspect of what I like to call like your brand ecosystem. You have social media, yes, and all of those different avenues and all of the different types of content and all the different channels, but you also have your visuals, right? So you mentioned logo, your colors, your wardrobe and personal style. You also have events and networking events that you attend. You also have your team who you associate. Birds of a feather is very much a part of your brand. You have collateral, print collateral, your business cards, your for sale signs. You have your CRM, your database, PR, earned media. I could go on and on and on, but it's it's so much more than social media and it's not just online. You know, there I'm sure that there are agents that have success in just generating leads and referring them out online. That's great. 
But what I love to do is work with real estate agents that are really looking to build that human first brand where they can walk down the street and be recognized. And then they can also go online and be connected with like-minded individuals and reach people that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to if they just only marketed within their zip code, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when somebody is sitting down to start developing this personal brand, what are some of those first steps that you suggest people to do so that they can kind of start getting themselves pointed in the right direction so that maybe in two or three years, they it's not like, oh man, this is definitely not who I am. Right. Yes. So oh, there's so many ways that I could answer this question, but I will keep in mind, we're talking mm -hmm. to folks just starting out, right? So my best advice is to first understand and know who you want to talk to who you want to do business with. Because if you know who you're talking to, you will always know what to say. Like Michael, you mentioned you're, you're married with kids. Like if I told you to pick up the phone and call your wife, you would know exactly what to say and how to talk to her, right? If I were calling up a girlfriend that I hadn't talked to in months, I would know exactly where to start and what to say. The challenge and the, and the paralysis that I see when it comes to showing up on camera, showing up online, putting yourself in a room at a networking event where you have never been before, or you think you're not qualified to be there, it's because you don't know who you're talking to. And what I find is that the number one mistake that people make when they first start to market themselves and, and suss out what their brand looks like is they try to speak to everybody. They try to go a, a, a mile wide, but an inch deep. And what I want you to do is to really understand who's that specific person you want to work with. Is it that first time home buyer? Because you were a first time home buyer a few years ago and you understand the neuroses and the, the fears and the pains and the ups and downs. Or is it that family looking to upgrade? Because you've worked with first time home buyers, you're good, you want to elevate and you want to work with families looking to upgrade into a higher price point. Um, or is it for, you know, those clients that are looking for a vacation home for their family along the coast because they live in the Northeast. If you go very, very specific, go an inch wide and a mile deep, you will have so much more success early on than trying to speak to everybody. Because if you're trying to speak to everybody, there was this great analogy. Are you familiar with Chris Doe? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure it's probably something if I heard it, it would come to me. Yeah. So I had him on our podcast a couple months ago, and he said that trying to market and brand yourself a mile wide and an inch deep is like trying to write a love letter to a loved one, but addressing it as to whom it may concern. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's insulting. You don't yeah. want your clients, your potential clients to feel insulted. There's so there's so much trust involved in the real estate process and so that's really where I'd recommend starting, knowing exactly who you're you're talking to. And trust me, you're not going to lose out on business. People are going to feel that love. They're going to feel that magnetism, that specificity. And they're then they're going to reach out to you and be like, hey, Michael, I know like your content only says that you work with first-time home buyers, but my wife and I are actually expecting and like we want to upgrade. Like, would you be able to help us? Those are real situations that happen all the time, but you got to start small. You got to start specific. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, really building up those, uh, you know, those client avatars of who you want to, mm -hmm. who, who to work with, but, uh, is great. And then, like you said, uh, and I think I've talked to a lot of people that are afraid of doing that because they are afraid mm -hmm. of losing out on the business. But mm -hmm. once you start making a name and building a reputation with that, you know, that client avatar that you've built, they're going to start referring you out to friends and family and neighbors that are not necessarily the people that, you know, were your initial focus. Exactly. Because the reason why I love to really focus and hone in on branding, and then you get to the marketing, then you get to the sales, then you get to the systems and process, because branding is the root of it all. It's the inception. It is the beginning. And branding is very, very emotional. It is not very logical. You think about the history of branding, um, sports teams going to battle, but you can think of any, you know, any given Sunday here in the States or even centuries ago when, you know, you would have different tribes and, and groups like with their coats of arms and they'd wear their colors. And it's like, it, it rouses something to you. It's emotional. And I, I harp on this and use these analogies to demonstrate that at the end of the day, again, we're humans and people all make buying decisions emotionally first. They buy on emotion. 
and then they justify logically thereafter. I'm sure there's an Amazon purchase or two that you have done this late night. And then you wake up with the buyer's remorse. It's not remorse. It's because you bought emotionally. And then you're trying to justify it logically the next morning. Perfect example. So I work with Ryan Serhan, who's a broker out of New York, and he's since expanded to multiple markets. Uh, about a year ago, he listed a $250 million penthouse in New York. It's the most expensive, highest residence in the world. $250 million. Anybody who pays that or anything near that there's no logic. There's no right. data. There's no comps. How do you explain that? You just go and take a look at the marketing, look at the branding, the story behind that that listing. And so that's why I absolutely love to start with branding there. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, we've, we, we've been talking a lot about uh, for those people just starting out, but it is, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that also, uh, you know, as the market shift and, you know, there might mm -hmm. be some agents that are struggling and realize, you know, maybe I've never taken the time to develop my own brand, even though I've been in this for 10, 20 years, I've really got to start doing something. Yeah. What are some of the things that they can do that maybe they already have that book of business behind them and some of the experience? Mm -hmm. What can they do to start building that personal brand? That is a great question. So, you know, another episode that I had done on, on my podcast was actually looking at what Nathan Chan, the CEO of Founder without the E had said about building credibility for your brand. And one of the first things that he recommends is that really powerful lifelong brands have great ambassadors, great people that cheerlead for the brand. And so if you're an established agent, maybe you've plateaued, maybe business has dried up because of shifting markets, or maybe, and I have multiple clients in the situation, they moved and they're in a whole new market and you, you still have referrals and maybe a team in your original market, but now you're having to make a name for yourself in the new market. Where I would start is by polling and doing some market research with your existing clients that have worked with you. I would ask them why they chose to work with you in the first place. I would ask them what adjectives or feelings or phrases come to mind when you think of me. Or, you know, when when you hear my name, what's the mental image that pops up? Right. Like for me, I, I'll ask my clients and they're like, yeah, Kat, you're probably wearing something red and, and a leather jacket. I'm like, perfect. I'm doing my job. So I would start with the market research, start to look at how your existing clientele perceives you and then ask yourself, is that how you want to be perceived? Right. What are what are your values? What do you feel your personality traits are? And then the closer that those are in alignment, the stronger your likelihood for generating referrals will be. So that's where I would I would start initially. And then the second tip, I would Google yourself. Because I see so many agents that come to work with me, they're three, five years in, so even 10, 15 years in, and they tell me you know, I'm a top producer. I have a team of 50. I've been with KW for 10 years, like all of these things. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, congratulations. Like, I can't wait to work with you. Like, let's get clear on your goals. And then I'll Google them and I, I can't find them. Um, or they have different contact information on all of the different listings. They don't have a Google business listing because they never took the time to set one up. Image search pulls up people that aren't looking like them, right? So I would say take the time to slow down, do an audit, do a Google search refresh, really make sure and gut check what your idea of you in your mind is actually what consumer perception is. Because consumer perception is truth at the end of the day. It's not factual. I'm not saying it's, it's factual, but it's their perceived truth. And that's what's going to drive their behavior of whether or not to call you or to respond to your text message. So those are the two things. Pull your existing clients, get a sense of what that looks like, and then also Google yourself. In fact, do that quarterly, I recommend. Right. And I really like the Google yourself one because uh, I do that all the time. I'll uh, Google agents, whether they're you know people I'm having on the podcast or people that we work with uh, yeah. you know, in our uh, other company. And it's right. Like you... I mean, the top three things, you have your realtor.com, your Zillow, and most of the time they don't have a picture on them. There's, I know. there's nothing there. And it's like, it, it's really not that time consuming to just get mm -hmm. those all in alignment with each other. Exactly. But it's one of those things that does not seem to be important. So it's never prioritized. But trust me when I say that the, the time you will take 
to slow down, to get all of your digital house in order, your digital presence in order will serve you long term. And another thing, Michael, that I've noticed working with real estate agents, because I was new to working with real estate until a couple of years ago, my, my background in working with startups from interior design, wellness, lifestyle fitness. We actually had a, a brand acquired by um, Alex Rodriguez and JLo when they were when they were still a thing. Um, and one thing I've just noticed is that so much of real estate is reactive and out of the control of the agents. They are not in the control of what the Fed does. They are not in control of the global economy. Um, and so I think it's so important to find ways to be proactive in your business to buffer you against those bad times. And branding yourself is proactive. Like I said, it puts you in the driver's seat. You're able to literally control how people perceive you by doing all these little things that, like you said, add up to over time, a really powerful, aligned, strategic revenue driving brand, right. which is right. what we want. And, and it just kind of bringing it back to what you said earlier about, you know, so many times people think that it's, it's the branding is just, you know, the social media creation. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, yes, I will look at somebody's Instagram page yeah. and kind of see what they're doing. But then I go Google them to see what kind of listings they've had. And, and that's where I get the, the reviews. I right. always go to Google for and Yelp because I'm a millennial, right? So yeah. I'll go to Yelp and see what's up. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And it is, it is just totally unaligned. You have like this great Instagram feed, but there's the other pages are totally empty. Right. And like I said, that can work for some agents, but I have seen the most sustainable, scalable way of building your brand online and then marrying it with offline activities is to ensure that the entire digital ecosystem is up to date, is human first, is personable. Like you're always considering the user experience on the other side of the screen. Like you were saying earlier, you don't really care what brokerage your agent's at. Like, are you a good person? Do I trust you? Because same thing that I said earlier, birds of a feather, you wouldn't be at that brokerage if you didn't trust them. So I trust you by extension, I trust them. And so I think taking the time to do that is so important because it also increases your chances. You don't know how people are searching. You might think, oh, well, I find all of my, I find my my, my hairstylist and, and my photographer on Instagram, but your ideal client might not, right? They might find it on Google, Yelp, X slash Twitter, whatever we're calling it these days, <laughs> LinkedIn, even if they're more mm -hmm. of a C-suite professional and that's your target audience. Mm -hmm. So don't let, don't limit yourself, you know, expand as much as possible and it, it'll only do good for you in the long term. Right. And a lot of these things are going towards that, you know, building of your brand credibility, but mm -hmm. what are some of those other keys to, you know, outside of, you know, making sure that your, you know, your digital footprint is all kind of in line. Uh, what are some of those other things that people can do to start building up that credibility within their, you know, their market or then even outside of their market? Yeah. So this is probably going to scare a lot of the newer agents, but I'm always here to like give you guys the real, real, I would say to really start to put yourself out there and develop partnerships and to bridge and build relationships with those that are in the media by appearing on this podcast, right? I am I am positioning myself in front of your audience. And likewise, Michael, you are when I shared like this episode, once it it um it get out, it get uh it's published. And so I think you can go it alone and and do those things that I recommended, but it's really easy to leverage other people's audiences and partner with them and get in front of them because they did the work to build the audience and you are aligning with them and sharing and delivering value. And you're being able to put yourself in front of exponentially more people without having to do exponential amount of work. So whether that be partnering with a local foundation or a charity or even joining the PTA, although may not, that may not be for everybody, I don't know, everybody's like small town <laughs> politics, but I think leveraging other people's audiences through strategic partnerships is another thing that you can do. So you don't have to do it by yourself. You don't, that's also another myth. Right. Like real estate agents thinking they're lone wolves on an island, like entrepreneurship can be lonely, but it doesn't have to be. And so that would be something that I would recommend. Right. And just one of those, one of the other things that you could really do. And uh, just so in my past life, I was a news video journalist. I worked for a, a television station 
And there we go. I'm talking to the exact person we were just talking about. I had about. <laughs> so many agents that were in my phone that whenever mm -hmm. we had a story come up about a housing market or a new development coming in, those were mm -hmm. the people that I called. And, you know, it's free advertising and, and not only free advertising, but it's free advertising showing how much of an expert they are in the market. Yes, it is. And I, I love that, like you, I like just had that example, like at the ready, I had no idea. And I, um, and I will call out that it can be daunting to do that, mm -hmm. to say, yeah. Hey, Michael, my name's Kat. I'm a local agent. I'm newer in the business, but very savvy about the market. If you need a story for new developments for families looking to upgrade their homes, right? I'm, you always go back to who's your ideal client. Don't just get on a platform to pitch yourself for the sake of pitching yourself. That's not going to do you any business. Um, traffic, right? Without intention is not going to result in sales. And so putting yourself out there, that can definitely be scary. Sometimes imposter syndrome, feeling like you're not qualified will pop up. But my recommendation is to push through that because like hitting the gym and building up weights and taking on heavier weights, it's harder in the moment, but you get stronger by doing it. And honestly, I look, I still have imposter syndrome crop up every now and then to me, and I don't know how you feel as like a business owner yourself, I look at it as purely a growth signal. Oh, if I'm feeling this, that means I'm doing something I've never done before. That's exciting. And I'm going to learn something about myself and I'm going to increase my skills and increase my talents so I can better serve my people and also just feel like I'm growing as a human. That's really cool. You know, it's like the growing pains. Like, you know, you mentioned your kids, they've got growing pains. It doesn't last forever, but they're stronger after it and taller, hopefully. Right. Absolutely. I mean, just doing this podcast over the last three, three and a half years, you know, mm -hmm just talking to some of the people and the success that they've had, like I get a little nervous. Like there's sometimes where you do get a little nervous, like, Oh man, yeah. I'm going to look like a clown talking to this person, but right. you get through it and then you get, and then you come away from it. Like, Oh, that was awesome. Like that was a, my favorite conversation I've had in a long time. Yeah. I, so my most recent instance of imposter syndrome was when we actually interviewed Chris Doe on our podcast. And I, this is why I love working with new agents sometimes because I had first heard of him um, when I attended a conference last summer and I saw him speak on stage. He was the opening keynote at the conference that I was attending with my podcast partner. And he immediately dove into uh, Marvel references and Spider-Man and talking about the hero's journey and branding. And I turned to my my podcast partner, Candace. I was like, I was like, we have to have him on the podcast. I'm, I don't know if you knew this about me, Michael, but I'm kind of a Marvel nerd. Like that's one of my, <laughs> my quirks. And I I was I didn't know him, right? I was new to him. All I knew was that I aligned with what he was saying and I was like I would love to have him and his insight on our podcast. Now after that, my partner looks him up on Instagram and finds and shows me that he has 935,000 followers. And she's like shows it to me almost as if to say like we could never. And I'm like, "Oh, I'm like, well that's more than I thought." Um but I don't care. We still need him on the podcast. So like lean into that beginner's luck and naivete, because if I had known that I might've stopped myself. And also I think you'll find most of the people that are farther ahead of you, you know, not better, not, 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 not smarter. They're just farther ahead in their journey. They're really like not that intimidating. Once you get to talk to them, they're all humans and they totally were exactly where you are. And most of them will be willing to share that, that like they started from zero. They started cold calling, learning the ABCs of real estate. And they didn't, you know, again, they weren't, nobody was born in a blazer. Right. <laughs> I go back to my original thesis. Right. Absolutely. So um, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the speaking that you do and, and, you know, going and working uh, with different uh, brokerages. I've seen, you know, a lot of things where, uh, you know, some of these brokerages have talked about the impact that you've had on their agents. So just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, thank you. So I think, you know, it's been a wild opportunity to be able to go in and just inject a bit of optimism and proactivity and curiosity into the day to day activities of real estate agents. I feel like real estate marketing has been due for a renaissance for quite some time. There are lots of coaching companies out there that have been successful and have helped hundreds, if not thousands, of agents, I have no doubt but we're in a different world. And I am always looking at what's going on in the macro landscape across industries, because like I had said earlier, 
it's all relying on the global economy, macro, micro, everything. It's all interconnected. And so, you know, when I am brought in by brokerages or I'm, I'm invited to speak at conferences, what they really want is a little bit of motivation, a little bit of inspiration, optimism, because the media takes care of plenty of the negativity. We don't need more of that. Um, but then balancing it with some intentional strategy, not just strategy for the sake of strategy, not just copying and pasting a content calendar or a process that worked for another agent, tr hoping that you're going to replicate that success for yourself because that doesn't work. We're all different humans. You say things in different ways. And so I really focus on, you know, that that mindset that kind of informs what you believe to be possible, what you believe you deserve, like all of those soft things, those those things that can keep us up at night. Because what I found is um, I can give you a, a $30,000, $50,000 brand strategy for you and your entire team and your brokerage. But if you don't believe that it's possible or you don't understand how to, how to approach imposter syndrome or buffer yourself against the reactive nature of the market and avoid burnout, you're never going to execute and then you're never going to see results. Um, one of my, my favorite things to remind people is that everything is an inside job first Love is an inside job. I've seen plenty of relationship therapists say that. Sales is an inside job. Branding is an inside job. Everything is. And so, you know, when I go and speak, I really start there and then I follow with the strategic. I follow with the logical, right? Emotion first, logic after, because that's how we are as humans. Right. Absolutely. And before we wrap up, I just, uh, Tell us a little bit about your podcast and what people can get from there. And then and then on your website, you have a ton of great freebies for people to yes. uh, get if they're listening to this and want to kind of start doing some of these exercises themselves to build that personal brand. Yes, absolutely. So our podcast is called Not Nice, Clever, and it is for the introverted entrepreneur. So if you are an introvert and you're entrepreneurial and you're a real estate agent, that's a trifecta. Definitely check it out. We talk on all things branding, marketing, money, and manifesting. So again, emotion and logic. And um, head over to my website. I have a ton of freebies. I don't like to gatekeep. You know, um, The one that I'd probably recommend you start with is to develop your brand bio. That's one of my favorite freebies that I've put out. It helps you answer those questions of who are you? Who do you want to serve? How do you want to serve them? And you can use it everywhere. You can use it in a networking pitch. You can use it on your website. You can use it in your social bios. So it's really a nice starter foundation for kind of crafting what can become your brand pitch. So that's just one of many freebies, but just head to my website. I think it's kattori.com backslash freebies. Um, and yeah. And then if you or anyone listening has questions or ideas for new freebies, like I'm, I'm open. I love being curious and and always like creating on the fly. So I'm an open book. Awesome. Well, this is obviously a conversation that really can span hours and have so many different avenues to go down. But yes. uh, I, I really think, you know, just even just starting out and determining what you want your brand to look like, who you want to serve is a great way mm -hmm. uh, for people uh, to come away from this conversation and kind of move forward. Yeah. It's, can I share one more analogy? Cause I yeah, know we're absolutely. talking real estate agents. Okay. So I know like I'm I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of if I were starting out and I know I I've talked a lot somewhat about strategy and tips but also a lot of mindset and so here's what I'll say addressing the intentionality and the mindset and knowing who you want to serve and how you want to do business that is really the concrete foundation of a home so many people want to run to Wayfair or Crate and Barrel and, and decorate the home and they haven't even put up studs. There's no drywall. And I'm like, why are you decorating the house? The house doesn't even exist yet. That's like the shiny toy of social media. So I implore you, lay the foundation. None of your clients would ever buy a house that had a cracked foundation, a sinking foundation. Nobody's going to want to do business with you if they sense that there's no solid foundation for them to land on with you. So take the time to lay that foundation and then build that house. And, you know, 50, 60, 70 years from now, it'll still be standing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's a great place to end it. I really do appreciate you uh, for taking the time to talk with us today. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you so much for having me here. This was really enjoyable. I want to thank Kat for joining us today and really like how she drilled home the fact that your personal brand needs to go beyond your social media presence. Remember to check out her free downloads and podcast. I've included links to both in the episode description. 
So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.